this is Timothy Perfect from Two Canoe Software, and I want to give you an update on our Automaton 2. We're getting very close to release. Hopefully, it'll be released next week. We don't have the hardware in stock yet, though we do have a few items. Um, but we're very excited about getting close to release, so I want to kind of show it to you. I, I usually work, uh, I have like a project over the holiday season to keep me occupied, and I've really been working my 3D printer a lot. And I've been, um, this is what the Automaton 2 looks like. Um, for those that don't know, the Automaton 2 emulates a keyboard and allows you to programmatically do keyboard strokes and it also turns on the mouse so it, it shows at least that the mouse is available. I haven't really added a lot of support for clicking because it's, uh, it's a whole relative thing that's difficult to do. But anyways, it does keyboard strokes. Um, but let me show you, this is the enclosure uh, that we did with the Automaton 2 and I'll show you a comparison from the original Automaton. So I'll, um, I'll get close up on here and you can see what I added in. So you can see here that uh, the, um, I did a lot of work on the enclosure um, with the 3D print. We added these symbols, one, two, and three, to kind of delineate the different buttons on it. So it has five LEDs and three buttons. But what I wanted to show you is the 3D print, while you can actually see the um, the traces, I just, or the, the actual, um, the filament where it laid down the, uh, the, the actually created the, um, the print, but look at the look at the way that the the pattern of the 3D print it looks like an etching or almost like a circuit board. I just think it looks really cool. And you have these these um, ribs on the side make it look like it's a kind of a retro case um, from something from the 80s, which I kind of started out with. But I worked I did tried multiple different designs um, with the different um, symbols on it and it just I think it came out really nice I just think the etching looks so cool um, and oh it's got USB-C on the side so that gives me kind of a, a way to kind of segue into how this call came about so our original automaton which is this this is what it looks like the automaton one let me give you a close-up view of that so this is what the automaton one looks like move over to it. and this this um, this had a micro USB in it and this is what was inside of it. It was a uh, itsy bitsy um, from uh, or from Adafruit, and it came with a micro USB. And you can see the micro USB here that this goes inside this 3D printed enclosure. But what we wanted to do was have this uh, improve on the uh, original one, the Automaton one. And so we added the three buttons to it and the LEDs. And I'll show you kind of some demos with it. But also the big deal is, is this, is um, the um, ability to create your own workflows. And that's, that's what's exciting about this because the original Automaton works with a software product we had called MDS, um, which basically launched a runner or a, a deploy tool that would then install macOS. And it was hard coded really to launch that. But what we did with Automaton too, because folks were asking that they wanted to have tweaks on those workflows. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to have something that emulated keyboard, but allows you to program it, right? So it's kind of like the reverse of a keyboard logger. Instead of recording all your keyboard strokes, it actually plays your keyboard strokes for you. Um, so you're, you can use it for an admin tool for anything that has a keyboard interface to it. So if you want to erase a Mac, you wanted to run a command, you wanted to uh, enter in a password, you wanted to navigate the UI on Windows, Mac, Chromebook, whatever, this would do that for you. Um, and it does have USB-C on the side. It comes with a USB-C cable. So let me show you. This is the cable that comes with it. And USB-C, and it's USB-C to USB-C, right? So that's the cable that comes with it. And um, it allows you, like I mentioned before, it allows you to program your own workflows to it. So let me switch over. And so we have here um, the, a, a view of the automaton here. I'll go ahead and plug this in to my laptop, um, to my Mac here, through the USB-C port. Um, and then we have the uh, application called Automaton, and it comes with all of these stock workflows. So let's go ahead and just choose two of them. We'll do light demo and say hello. Those are the first two, and I'll go ahead and update the Automaton. It'll actually put those workflows onto the Automaton. And you can see if I press button number one, it should just light up the lights. So there's light one, two, three, four, 
and it's five. And we added the light pipes and uh, you can see the this kind of white and it's flat uh, on here. And it looks, uh, I think it looks really cool. So we press this again, you can kind of see. I just love the look of that, right? We have different, the same colors above the, the buttons and then uh, different colors on the side. Those are all programmable. Um, and the second workflow that I have here, you can see button two says, say hello. So let's actually look at that say hello. And these, all these ones with underscores are the ones that come with it, kind of like templates you can modify for your own. So we'll go down to say hello. And you can see here are all the steps. First thing is does it open spotlight by uh, presses command space. So it opens up spotlight types in terminal, presses enter, um, and then types in the say hello command, and then close the window. It doesn't turn on any LEDs, so you shouldn't see any LEDs, so it'll just run it. So go ahead and press the second button. You can see open up spotlight. Hello. There it goes, and it said hello, and then it closed the window. So I like that workflow, but I don't, I don't like the fact that it doesn't have an LED that turns on to show that it's running it. So let me go ahead and duplicate it. And I'll say, say hello with LED. And I will take out the underscore. And at the very beginning, I want to do LED. And while it's running, I want to do, um, since it's button two, we're going to press. So we will do button two and the state will do uh, fast flash. That sounds great. And we'll change this one to say hello with LED. And then I'll go ahead and update the automaton. And then I'll put the new one on there. So now when I press two, it lights up, does a fast flash on the um, uh, hello. LED, and it says hello. So we're able to take one of the stock ones and be able to modify it to our needs. So let's do something a little bit more in depth. So let's say um, we have a whole bunch of machines uh, and we have a, a course going in the summer that we need Audacity installed onto each one of these machines. When we set them up, we forgot to put it on there, or that's the only thing we wanted to add to it. It's not worth managing with MDM. So we can use this tool to just uh, modify the say hello so it opens up the command line, uh, uh, the terminal, and installs Audacity. So Audacity is available on GitHub. So it's GitHub Audacity releases, and you can see there's the universal release, but it's in a disk image. So what we have to do is download the disk image, mount the disk image, copy the app to the applications folder, eject the application, and then as a bonus, I'll open up the app and dismiss the, the kind of the terminal, the, um, the tutorial window that comes up. So let me show you, here's the actual script that I'll be using. So I use the curl command, let me see, is it hard to see? Let me uh, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So we do the curl command, dash L means it follows redirects, which means if, and, and GitHub does redirect the, the URL and take the output and put it someplace where we know what the name is, in temp audacity. And then here's the URL I got from that web page, so we'll just download it from that URL. And then I use the HCI util mount to mount it from temp audacity.dmg, which we just downloaded. And then inside the disk image, it's in volumes, audacity is the app, so we'll copy that to applications. And then once it's done, we want to do some cleanup, so we'll eject the disk, or the disk image, and we'll remove the original disk image and then we'll open up the app. So that's kind of the scripting portion of it. And then we'll put some other things around it to be able to, I'll do some other things around it to be able to um, um, kind of give some feedback. So let's go into here and we'll copy the say hello one again and we'll call this one install audacity. Okay, and I guess I should have used the one with the LED but let me just go ahead and put the LED in and this time we'll do LED, we're gonna do it with three. So it's gonna be above three and let's do a triple flash because three flashes are better than two. Um, and so um, start up LED. And then we go down to uh, run terminal. Instead of say hello, we'll go ahead and run this command, right? Which is uh, all this. And we'll do press return at the end. And we'll give it five seconds because we need about five seconds for it down to download the internet. You want to adjust that based on your speed. And then we're going to go ahead and type another section, which is to clean up. We'll just put it clean up. I like to break these things up to, so it's easier. It's more modular. And we'll add a return at the end. And this one, um, because it's going to open up the app, we want it to delay for about 10 seconds. Um, and then we won't close the window. And there's no reason we 
can't, but let's just leave that off for now. Um, and then we want to wait, or it's already waiting 10 seconds, but we want to, oh, I'm gonna do the wait after. Sorry, I want to do zero and then 10 seconds after. And then after the app is launched, we wanna press return um, to dismiss the dialog. Uh, here we go, and we'll do capture, return. Return to dismiss uh, initial dialog. And then um, we don't really need to do delay, we'll just leave the default one. So now when we run this one, it should install Audacity onto this computer and launch it. Let's see if I have Audacity on here already. No Audacity. So I'll go ahead and upload this. Oh, I wanna assign it. Install Audacity to button three. I'll go ahead and update the automaton with that workflow. And let's see how we did. So we'll go ahead and imagine we're just walked up to this machine. We press uh, number three. Oh, button three is flashing triply, opens up terminal, makes up a new terminal window, and it should run the command to do Audacity, which it did. Just copied it over. Now it's going to do the cleanup. There it goes. Launches Audacity. And it has that 10 second delay because you can see it takes a while. Then it should press return to do the OK. There it goes. And now this machine's ready for students or whoever's using these machines to be able to set them up. So it's no substitution for an MDM or a fully managed machine, but it's a great way to automate some of the things you may have forgotten about or things that aren't you're not able to do with other tools. Um, so that's kind of an example of, of how you would use the automaton to um, do another operation. So one of the other things is we install uh, by default all of these um, all these like stock uh, workflows. And so I just kind of go through those. So the Erase Mac allows you to go through and uh, boot into uh, recovery, um, or you can actually erase the Mac uh, in recovery. So you can see that it's, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it goes into disk utility and erases the Mac. Um, the light demo we already talked about has some reinstall Mac OS. You can see this one, uh, once you start up from the recovery boot selector, it'll go ahead and select it, boot into it, and erase the Mac. Uh, we did say hello, set up system one and two, we'll walk you through. You can see there's uh, descriptions up top, install monitoring of insurance, and use this to complete setup assistant screens. This one signs into Mac OS, so it basically types the password, which is two canoes, um, and signs into that, that machine. This one's forced the user to log out, um, so it logs the user out and then shuts down. Audacity uh, and these two, we, we set up ourselves. So the, we're hoping to release this next week. Uh, we don't have the hardware ready yet. We've got about eight to 10 of these that we're uh, finalizing the design. Oh, one of the things I wanted to also show you, which is kind of neat, the, um, the original uh, development board that we have this, let me switch over to just showing the automaton here. So this is what the original one looked like. So you can see that it has five LEDs and three buttons. Um, and it uses the, the DF robot, which is the 32U4 ARM-based processor. But the nice thing about this is it has USB-C. The original one had, had micro USB and it required, um, a, if you want to use, you'd have to have a micro USB and then on the other side you would have USB-A and then you'd have to have an adapter which was kind of kind of messy, right? So we replaced that with the Automaton 2, which has the multiple buttons, the LEDs, but also has USB-C on it, which is really easy to plug it in. One thing you can do is you could plug a USB-C to A and then plug it in something that requires a USB-A one as well. So you do have that, um, you do have that functionality if you do want it. So anyways, that's an update on the Automaton 2. You can pre-order it. If you go to store.2canoes.com, you can pre-order the Automaton 2. Um, we, we have a large number that we're creating for uh, a large company, and we wanted to order some additional ones if anybody else wants them to be able to use them. Um, depending on demand, we might have another order, but I would definitely recommend getting order in for this first one. Um, and I was planning on injecting, using injection molding for the um, Automaton, but I don't know. It's going to take a while. It takes about 45 minutes to 50 minutes per enclosure to print these. But I just think they turned out really cool looking. I just, I just like the look of it. I don't know. Let me know. Put, put, uh, put in the comments what you think about 
uh, the enclosure, if I should do injection molding on it. It is quite expensive for the uh, mold itself, but um, I just think that it might be worthwhile getting another 3D printer and printing a whole bunch of these because I think mean, it turned out looking really nice. Um, and if I didn't mention it, these little slots here on the side uh, are for a, um, on the side here are for zip ties to be able to uh, use if you want to attach them to something. It helps with uh, lots with, with uh, sticky fingers, people taking them away, but it also allows you to screw them and just make things nice to be able to put them in there. Oh, and the other thing, um, we had the original design of this uh, had the uh, the um, DF robot ends as well as the anything that's a 30GU4 processor only has 3K of, of EEPROM on it, which is what stores the um, which is what stores the workflows. And what we found with uh, creating these workflows, it wasn't enough space, especially if you do command line commands, typing text. It takes up a lot of bytes. So we added, we did a second spin of the hardware and we put a 32K EEPROM on it and then changed the firmware to be able to support that additional um, uh, um, memory to be able to have the longer workflow. So now each workflow can be up to 1K and um, that should be plenty of, or not 1K, sorry, uh, 10K. And that should be plenty of space to do it way better than 1K, right? So it was 3K before three workflows, just wasn't enough space. We were constantly hitting that. So we went back and, and added it. You can actually see, here's the EEPROM. Next one actually has. So this is the EEPROM that got added. It's a little circuit board I got. Um, it's external that allows you to uh, connect it directly up to your Arduino. And this one is 32K and just hooks up to the uh, I2C interface and as a library it allows you to communicate with it and program it. And that's all in the software. So please head off, off to store.2canoes.com and pre-order it if you're interested in it. Or leave a comment below about what you think about the enclosure and about um, any features that you want. And we should make the software available next week as well so you can download and play around with it. Um, and so we're excited about it. So thanks very much for watching and make sure to check, check out more information at 2canoes.com. Thank you.